Hello, welcome to Wings Talks. I'm your host, Frank, and we'll be talking with different folks in the community about important issues that we need to talk about. Today, we're talking about body image in the gay, queer, and fetish scenes. Let's talk to some community members and see what they have to say about it. Hi, my name is RJ and my pronouns are he and him. I've learned to kind of evolve with um, over the last few years. So I think that yeah, it's really cool to go on and share my experiences um, because I'm sure I'm not the only one, but as out there and is definitely not a fan of their body. Yeah, you're definitely not the only one, of course, yeah. I am an extremely hairy guy. Um, I've shaved today, so I don't look it, um, but I get body hair everywhere. I call myself a werewolf because it is literally, it gets really thick and it's everywhere. So I just feel like, especially if I'm wearing like no top, I just feel like I'm a walking carpet. Um, coppered with the fact that I'm also quite a broad guy. Um, I know a lot of people probably are like, yeah, you're broad, that's great. Me, I hate it. I hate feeling so wide. Um, but it's also, I guess, in a way, something which I can't change. But it's kind of irritating in a way. <laughs> no, that's fair. That's understandable. And yeah, you're right. There's a lot of people that, you know, are going to drool over your body because of the size <laughs> or the hair. I know lots of guys that really love that, right? So it's definitely an internal struggle, right? Definitely. I get so many comments from guys when I do post pictures, if I do have a bit of fuzz, they're like, oh, you should show more of that. I'm like, really? That's the thing I hate the most. I'm trying to hide that. <laughs> Are there times, uh, specific times you could talk about where you felt like you didn't want to show your body or you felt like your body wasn't good enough? Definitely. I am a huge lover of rubber. Um, and I have always wanted to be able to wear like a rubber t-shirt. Um, but if I want to wear anything like that, it always has to have a zip up the middle because trying to get a rubber t-shirt on is impossible. I actually went into a store in London the other week to try one on and I had to have someone help me. And even then it was just, it was a nightmare it, because I just felt like such an inconvenience because it's something which you imagine you see guys online that wear these shirts and you're like, they just put it on themselves. You know, they put a lube on, just slides on. It's great for me. Because of how broad I am, it gets to that point and then it kind of wedges my arms in and I'm like, help, I can't do anything. Um, and then you just feel really like someone's got to be there and literally shove it down and like get it over your arms and, and then getting it off is just as much a drama. And that whole feeling and the whole time you're kind of like, I'm great, someone's helping me and that's lovely, but I just want to die. I just want to feel like, you know, you you feel almost abnormal. You feel almost like... You know, anyone else could go into a store and think, I'll try on this rubber shirt. Cool, I'll do that. That's easy. Um, but for me, it's almost like it has to be a mission, which it almost shouldn't be in a way. Well, I'll tell you the truth, actually, when it comes to rubber clothing and especially a rubber top, uh, I worked at the Mr. B shop for some time. And I'll tell you, with anyone trying on rubber, it is not a one person job. It's actually so you feel like bad about it for yourself because you feel like you see, you know, the few guys who do it on their own. But most guys, most people need someone to help them pull it down. It's really a very tight fit garment and yep. you need to, if you're not going to use lube or or uh, talc powder it's going to be impossible but even with those supportive products it's a lot of work to get a top <laughs> on so don't feel bad about it you're not the only one that needs support yeah. with that but but that's, that's fair that that's hear. it's fair that that's what you feel and that's your experience with that and that's important right well i mix uh, my pronouns are uh, they and them but also he and him because it, on a personal level, it really determines uh, how I feel, how I feel about myself. And that's not in a good way. And um, on a larger scale, the whole society is sort of built into categories. If you don't fit in a category, you don't uh, fit in. Uh, well, it's a problem when I want to buy uh, fetish clothing, for instance, because I'm big, I'm fat, I'm overweight. And that means uh, that the regular sizes are not the sizes that I need. I need bigger sizes and they are not so easy to, to get by. It's always made to measure. So it takes a long time, longer time to have them made. Uh, and they're always more expensive than the regular fetish clothing, so to say. A friend of mine had a term for that. Um, they called it the fat tax. 
because it always costs yeah. extra money <laughs> yeah, exactly. to, to dress a fatter body. Yeah. yeah. Hi, I'm Dennis, and I'm using he and him pronouns. I personally get confronted with my own body since the very first time that I started dating men. And it's always felt kind of negative to me. So I think it is very important that we talk about that topic in a more supporting way, in a more accepting way. Hi, my name's Jake. My pronouns are he, him. The topic of body image is important to me because it's something that's constantly been referenced to me since I was a child. I've always been called fat or big or, you know, choose your perfect epithets thereof. It ranges in positivity from large to fat and it, it kind of has such negative associations to it. Um, it's something that I've never been able to escape and as a result it's been entrenched in my psyche for years and it's been a source of bullying, it's been a source of celebration. So the topic of body image has been something that I've been campaigning with. I've I've got friends that I've met uh, campaigning on behalf of male body image. I've talked about it in my charity work. I talk about it with the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. I, it's something that I constantly try and bring up because within the LGBTQ plus community, it's something that's not really talked about very often. Did you ever feel like your body wasn't good enough as a result of that or at any other specific times? My body isn't good enough. But that's not me thinking that, it's other people thinking that. And that's the pro it took, that was the thinking that it took years for me to work out and to try and reevaluate. At the end of the day, I have a frictive relationship with my body. Do you feel like there are certain expectations for a body in the gay community? When you scroll through the media, you see a lot of like thin, muscular guys with a six pack, no hair. That's like that uh, the body image that's portrayed. But if you like actually go into the uh, community, uh, the men always searching for a reflection of themselves. For example, the muscle community always searches for the huge muscle kind of guys. The bear community searches for more of a like a bigger kind of person, but not too big. A hairy kind of person, but not too hairy. And then there's the leather community, for example, who's searching for the really thin, twink, boyish, I think. At least that's my experience. I can't talk for everybody, but at least that's my experience. It affected me because it was completely out of nowhere. It was complete. It was like someone just walked up to me and called me fat. Like, with no kind of introduction, no kind of discussion, no kind of anything to any of us it was just you're fat and it's like wow there's a constant conflict with other persons um about your own body which is also creating a conflict in your own mind and then um how does that make you feel when you have to get your clothing or your fetish gear custom made it makes me feel like shit because i it's because i'm bigger I, I am always put down by the people around me, so to say. I was always put down. Um, so I don't feel like very strong to stand up for myself and say, okay, I want to buy this, I want to have it, because I think it will look great on me. But I don't dare to go to the shop because I feel ashamed about myself. Yeah, that's fair and that's very relatable. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people feel that same way. And what happened when you started dating men? Uh, they kind of tried to project their own preferences and uh, a body on me. Um, I started, for example, as a twink slash chaser because I really liked the uh, the big hairy guys and I really enjoyed the, their hair and I wanted to be the same. But they kept on talking to me like, well, don't try to hide your perfectly thin body under all that fur you should shave it off and that was my real it was really the first time where I got confronted with oh I have to adjust my body in a certain way otherwise he is not attracted to me name a bar that you've been to that's a leather bar or uh, a bear bar or something like that you always find someone who is not quite of that t body type and therefore feels rubbish about themselves as a result I mean if you like bears and you want to go to a bear bar, there's nothing wrong with that. 
But you will find people at that bar who are like, you're not a bear, you shouldn't be here. And there's there's a bear, there's a bar um, in nearby Bristol called Bristol Bear Bar. And uh, one of my friends uh, goes there as regularly as he can, COVID allowing. And um, he was working as a bartender there for when he was at university over in Bristol. And he's always like, oh, I'm not a bear, but I really like going there. And it's like, well, who gives a stuff? Like... At the end of the time, at the end of the day, if you enjoy the people, you enjoy the environment, you enjoy the sound music, whatever, the atmosphere, go, have fun. Like, no one should really be giving you grief over what you look like or what size you are. It's, as far as I'm concerned, it's tantamount to racism. Like, what is the point? There is no point. It's just rude at the end of the day. When I started getting bigger, I got that kind of response as well. Like, hey, you got so big. Why did you got so big? Shouldn't you lose weight? Isn't that unhealthy for you? And I was like, no, I feel like eating and I feel good at it. And I get checked regularly by my doctor. So I'm also healthy. It comes from almost what has been ingrained in us since kind of where homosexuality has evolved from. So when you've had things like, for example, as old as it is, the village people, where you, it's bad because you had each person there dressed up a certain way. Um, and then, like, the start of things, like Tom of Finland. If you look at Tom of Finland, a lot of the models there fit a certain type. They're wearing a certain type of gear. And I think that certain things from that have evolved. Um, and what doesn't help is a lot of it is still represented on social media. What are some of the things that have helped you over the years with body image? Uh, well, it helps to have a firm base at home, someone who trusts me and uh, loves me for who I am. Um, it also helps to have uh, you know, a support, supportive surrounding, so at my work it helps even more through the years, because uh, I work at Mr. B and Mr. B uh, uh, it gets more inclusive. Um, we all have to have our strategies to kind of deal with our issues, our body image issues and how we how we manage through the systems. The way that you can really help yourself with body image issues is to make cognitive changes to the way that you approach situations. So if you know that you have these issues, maybe not rushing towards buying men's health, for example, where it obviously shows people who are muscular all the time. Um, maybe not f fantasizing about specific body types in the porn that you access and watch and enjoy well i try to get my mindset in a different way it's like uh, my body image and how i feel in my body is my own personal thing and i should not be concerned about the judgment of others as long as i feel good about it so the first thing is that you have to tell yourself i feel good i feel nice i feel great in my body um I don't have uh, I don't have to have anyone else to taught me differently, and secondly, I think it's important to find a way where you actually feel comfortable in my body. I have been heavier heavier than I have been now, and I felt awful because I was I actually felt heavy and I was not able to do certain things. So over the last couple of months, I lost weight, and I'm still thick and juicy, but I feel good with it now, and I think that two components together are really necessary to like increase how you feel about your own body mindset and finding actually a point where you feel good in your body and so then are there things that you avoid or places you avoid or things that you try not to do that you find might trigger those moments of insecurity or might make you feel bad about your body uh, i really try to avoid buying clothing actually i experienced a lot of like actually all the time that i try to fit clothes in a certain size and they just don't fit me because the measurements are so off and it's not just with fetish clothing or whatsoever it's like i can't go to h&m and just buy something from the rack because well mostly it's built for thin build guys and um, I really have to search and hunt for the clothing that fits me and I'm I would not say I'm afraid of it but I'm fastly annoyed of it so I avoid it yeah I understand that shopping is always a difficult 
um, moment for a bigger person because like you said, clothing is mostly designed for a standardized body, which is fit like a mannequin's shape, which if you don't have a mannequin's shape, you're gonna have a hard time shopping. So uh, I definitely can relate to that. I almost avoid things that I know are gonna make me feel like that. So if there is like a rubber top I want, I will look to see if there's a way of getting it with a zip because I know I can get it on with a zip and I know I can get it on quite well with a zip and it looks fine for me, I'm happy with that. Um, the body hair, I shave when I can, usually every month. Um, I've kind of learned to shave it myself. Um, a lot of people are amazed when you like, I shave my chest and my back and they're like, how do you do your back? It's just, well, years of experience. It's kind of what I've had to do. Um... I love my legs. This sounds really stupid. <laughs> it's not stupid. It's not stupid. <laughs> I like my pecs, actually. Like, I don't do much for them, but they're like, they're there and I like them. And um, my shoulders, I got, I get a lot of compliments from my shoulders because they are so wide. And it's like, yeah, these, these two things I, I really like about my body. It's like, I don't do have... I don't have to do anything about it, but they're still there. <laughs> nice. That's good. It's good to feel good. When I'm wearing high heels, I get to wear shorter dresses because I like what the way that my legs look. So why the why the hell not? Like I get really good positive energy about myself when I went to the gym. So that's all mental, and um, that's that's mainly the only thing when I like my body. Otherwise, I don't like my body at all. No. That's fair. That's fair. And that's normal. Uh, you don't have to like your body or love your body. Uh, there's this thing people talk about because people talk about body positivity a lot, like thinking, oh, you have to love your body or be happy with your body. But mm -hmm. it's also normal and nice and acceptable to just be okay with your body. And so people talk about it in, uh, with a term called uh, body neutrality. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much about forcing people to feel like they have to be good, about, feel good about their body because, you know, we shouldn't have to feel any particular way about our bodies. Mm -hmm. um, but body neutrality is more about being okay with the body that we have. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we might want to change some things, but we also acknowledge that our body's done a lot of good things for us as well. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. breathing, walking, you know, able to meet the people that we love. And then what is something that you could do to celebrate your body each day? It sounds kind of cheesy, but honestly, after I took a shower, I stand in front of the mirror and tell myself, bitch, you look good. <laughs> nice. That's not cheesy. That's amazing. Positive affirmations. It's, it's very powerful when we tell ourselves the messages we give ourselves. Um, and when you give yourself a positive message, especially daily, it does have profound effects. I think that you can celebrate your body each day by doing something for it. Now, that sounds like a huge task, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Well, being myself and accept myself for who I am and how I look like. Wear short pants in summertime and show off my tattoos and t-shirt. And... I try and find something positive about the way I look every day, whether it's, oh, my hair looks good today because my hair is never the same. No matter how many times I style it, it comes out differently. So something as simple as that, just looking in the mirror when you're getting ready and going, oh, that's nice today. Or, you know, oh, my, I don't have bags under my eyes today. Um, I would say to that person that no matter who you are, no matter what you may think, you are beautiful. Um, and for every person that you see online that you think, wow, I wish like that, there are people looking at pictures of you, there are people looking at you in the street and there are people that spot you when you're out on those nights out but they're thinking exactly the same thing they're thinking wow i wish i looked like you well it's easier said than done but um fuck <laughs> fuck society <laughs> do your own stuff be proud of yourself be proud of who you are and who you, how you look like and everybody is beautiful in their own way own special way and you don't have to be friends with everybody and also when you're in a room with 300 people and you feel like shit, I'm pretty sure that you're not the only one feeling shit. There are other people who feel shit, like shit as well. And um, yeah, everybody has their own stuff and their own thing, even though you cannot see it on the outside. On the inside, there's a lot of stuff going on. Get a clue. Everyone around you is having 
the same thoughts and feelings about their own bodies. Get a clue. You are not the only one. I realise it feels like you're the only one. I'm really sorry about that, but look around you. Everyone has a body. Everyone has an opinion on that body. So yeah, embrace who you are and don't ever feel like no one is looking at you and thinking that you are a beautiful person. Beautiful, that's amazing. Try to not give a fuck about someone else. It is difficult to not do that on a constant note, but really try to exercise to not give a damn fuck about anybody else. And if you do at a certain point, don't drag yourself down with it. Just try, keep on trying till it till you succeed. Yeah, that's the thing. Even though everyone has a very different experience, feeling too big, feeling not big enough, too hairy, not hairy enough. When you think about it, it's quite impossible and doesn't even make sense. It makes it very clear that really there are systems in place that make us feel bad about our bodies. Our body is not the problem. Thanks for watching our Wing Talks. You can check out more of our videos here and also don't forget to click like and subscribe. And if you want to be part of any of these conversations, just message us on social media. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can find the links below. See you next time.